There is no honor among criminals. We'll find ways to steal from each other. Hey, Jim, I uh, hear that even the bad guys sometimes are uh, hijacked, as it were, by other bad guys with their malware. Can you tell me what happened there with this story that you're looking at? Yeah, LokiBot is a, is a piece of malware. It's an information stealer. It you know, steals passwords, you know, credentials from a, a lot of things, banking, you know, your SSH passwords, your FTP clients, your email. And it's been around for... Oh, about three years or so. And it, it started out, uh, you know, available for about $300 on, you know, the black market. But what's interesting is that the newest copies of it that are being spread out there uh, don't appear to actually be owned by the original author. There's some other bad actors out there that have taken the malware and repurposed it for themselves without having to really pay for the legitimate versions. One of the clearest indications that it's no longer the original author is uh, there's a, a routine in the malware to do uh, the C2 URLs are embedded in the malware encrypted with triple des. And so there's a routine to decrypt these. Well, that routine has been completely rewritten. And instead of decrypting the triple des encrypted versions of the URL, there's another version of the UR, uh, another URL in there that's simply XORed. And the decryption routine skips the triple des and just XORs this other one. So it looks like somebody managed to get their hands on a copy of it and patched one routine and found the spot where they could stick another string in there. And now they're selling their copy of, of LokiBot for instead of $300 a copy or $400 a copy, they're now selling it for like $80 a copy uh, on the black market. You know, the bad guys are stealing from each other you know, with this pretty successful malware family and repurposing it uh, as another version for themselves. I think this goes to show, we've always said this, right, you know, it's not hacking for fun or for, you know, showing your power in terms of skills anymore. It is about crime as a service. And the fact that it will cost you $300 initially to get it, now you can get it for 80 bucks and you have the how-to videos. It's almost like customer support with the low-key bot is available to you. Right. So. right. And, you know, um, the thing I was thinking about is there are lots of malware sa samples out there that don't even encrypt their command and controls, right? Because I know we do a lot of malware analysis, we reverse engineer, and a lot of times it's clear text in there. And I know at least on one occasion, many years ago, I had to do a test and I did just hex edit it to like the C2 that I wanted it to point to and ran that sample. Of course, I didn't have a control panel on my backside to receive this stuff, but it came to me as opposed to going to the bad actor. Um, so, you know, that technique is, um, I guess I'm kind of I'm surprised that somebody went out of their way. They liked LokiBot so much, whoever this bad actor was, uh, and the features that it had, that they went through the process of reverse engineering it, taking out that one piece of code, and then rewriting that triple des, and then compiling it again, or somehow doing it, um, you know, right in line with the process there. So uh, interesting uh, technique, I guess. Um, you know, my heart does not break for either side of the equation here, but uh, it's probably, you know, I'm not surprised, but like you said, no honor among thieves, so. Yeah, and it, like I said, it's it's still showing up in a lot of malware spam campaigns coming in either as a, a, a zipped uh, attachment or a, an office document that then uses uh, macros to uh, extract the payload, and it, I'm seeing, you know, some of my threat feeds. I'm seeing, you know, dozens of variants a day of this. So uh, 
it appears to be fairly lucrative for whoever did, you know, steal it. So you cannot just think about low key bot. You also have to think about variants of a particular, you know, a malware that is there. So I think just awareness, knowing what is out there. And today, I think as an user, if you are, you know, using a system, whether it is internally within an organization or you're just using any device, you need to understand the different elements of compromise.